Hello, this is Leah Whitehorse from Lua Astrology with the astrological forecast for February 2014. Jupiter forms a trine to Chiron on the 5th of February. This is the second of three trines that these two bodies will make. Jupiter trine Chiron encourages healing. It asks you to see the positive, to make the best of your experiences, even those that have been painful. Jupiter trine Chiron reminds you of what you've learned from pain. This is a time of emotional growth. With Jupiter still retrograde in Cancer, this is about turning inwards and tenderly dressing those painful wounds that you've experienced in life. The setbacks, knockbacks and sheer heartbreaks. Finally, these scars can be healed. Much of this healing can come from accepting your vulnerabilities, much like a mother will unconditionally love a child. Give loving attention to your weaknesses, acknowledge them, and then you can move on. Now, we have the first of the Mercury retrogrades beginning on the 6th of February. Each Mercury retrograde this year will begin in a water sign, then will move back into an air sign. So this year, there will be a need to re revisit certain emotional experiences in order to relate to others more effectively. The February retrograde will start in the sign Pisces. So it's about looking at your spiritual path and reflecting upon your emotional growth. You may feel more sensitive whilst Mercury is retrograde in Pisces, and some may find that their psychic or intuitive function increases. During the early part of this retrograde, keep an eye on where you put things like your keys, for example, or any important small items as forgetfulness is quite common. Things long forgotten can bubble up to the surface as Mercury carries the dreams from your subconscious to your conscious mind. It can be useful to keep a dream diary during this time and to explore the imagery and the symbols or any reoccurring themes. Make some space for silent contemplation or meditation and choose your words carefully when, you, when you're communicating. Be mindful of how your words can affect others. As with any Mercury retrograde, it is wise to back up your computer, check your antivirus and be really vigilant when you're dealing with paperwork. As an astrologer, I would normally advise waiting until Mercury retrograde is over before making large purchases or signing contracts. But we can't always put life on hold when Mercury is retrograde. So it's about being as clear as possible when signing contracts or making decisions. As Mercury moves back into Aquarius on the 13th of February, you may find yourself reassessing your social circle or group connections. Misunderstandings between friends is possible during this time, so try to keep things light and maintain a sense of humour. Mercury's trickster energy, who occasionally enjoys the results of muddled messages, so try to see the funny side and keep communication flowing. A full moon in Leo occurs on the 14th of February. Now Leo is the child of the zodiac, playful, enthusiastic and full of courage. Essentially, this lunation asks you, where's the fun in your life? If you're in a relationship, the full moon in Leo encourages you to put the spark back into your romance. If you are the creative type, this moon is useful for finishing up projects previously started, as well as indulging in activities that feed your imagination and fuel ideas to work on in the future. The full moon is opposite Mercury retrograde and square to Saturn, so you may feel as though your creative juice has been watered down. Perhaps an idea that you've been working on now seems like it's reached its shelf life. Or maybe you're concerned with what others will think, or perhaps your ideas haven't been received as well as you thought they would. The trick with this full moon is to make the necessary changes and then try again. The opposition to Mercury retrograde suggests something needs to be rethought. 
the square to Saturn pushes you to rework it, but also to continue developing your idea. The Mercury square to Saturn in this chart can tend, to, tend towards negative thinking, which is out of line with Leo's normally very cheerful disposition. Don't let anything wipe the smile off your face. A sextile from the full moon to Mars in Libra shows that you may need to accept the input of others. Balance your ideas with your friends or your partner. Carve out some time to be playful and spontaneous. If you have children, they may seem more boisterous than usual, but just join in with the fun. If things seem heavy, or you're mentally struggling, or you're in a black mood, Give yourself some time to recharge your batteries. Leo rules entertainment, so you may simply need some time out so that you can return to your work refreshed. Put on a favourite movie or catch up with friends, make a date night, play a game, go clubbing, whatever it takes to shift you to a lighter mood. Leo rules the heart, so do whatever it is that makes your heart sing. The North Node moves into Libra and the South Node into Aries on the 18th of February. This means that there is a karmic shift of attention. Libra energy is going to have a lot of attention this year with a Mars retrograde through this sign which begins next month. For all of us, what this means is there is a pull towards learning to get along with each other. Libra is a sign of relating and relationships. Personal relationships are likely to get a makeover this year. In a way, this is about moving from a subjective to an objective viewpoint. Our interactions with others provide us with a mirror so that we can see ourselves more clearly. The Libra emphasis means that we have to take into consideration other people and recognise that what we do makes an impact upon others and our actions have consequences. It's about sharing what you have and playing nice. My way or the highway attitudes will be in for a stark wake-up call. As the North Node journeys through Libra, we are asked to be more diplomatic in our communications it's about learning to cooperate with one another and to bring a better balance to life. In the wider world, this transit urges towards open negotiations rather than self-serving dialogues, an evolutionary development which will aid us in the long run. I think of this transit as a cosmic tune-up. Venus, ruler of Libra, is about where we find harmony if you are singing out of tune with someone, the North Node in Libra will make this discordance too uncomfortable to continue. Singing in harmony requires active listening, so one of the features of this transit is about learning to listen to the other and then pitching your tone accordingly. In your personal life, consider how can you communicate more effectively? Where can you compromise? Where do you need to pay more attention to your partner or others who are close to you? It's about curbing impulsive action and overall being mindful of how your actions affect others. Also on the 18th of February, the sun enters Pisces, highlighting the need to explore your spiritual side and to seek out a little soul healing. Sensitive, dreamy and imaginative, Pisces is moved by beautiful things, art, film, poetry, music, these all speak to your soul. Allow some time for contemplation, visit the sea or a lake if you can, or a sacred space which is important to you. Set up an altar at home or cleanse the one that you have. Meditate, remember your God, Goddess or Higher Self. When the sun is in Pisces, it shines a light on where we need to be more compassionate, more tolerant and more forgiving. It's about recognising that we are all in this together and there is an invisible thread that connects us all. Pluto makes the last of its sextile aspects to Chiron on the 25th of February. These two have been dancing together for the past two years, and this is the final piece of the puzzle that offers you the opportunity to fix what has been shattered. 
Pluto in Capricorn has been testing foundations and looking for weak points, ruthlessly cutting away anything which doesn't stand up to the test of time. It's about making concrete changes in your life that facilitate the healing process. Let go of what isn't working. On the 26th of February, Jupiter and Uranus lock into place with a square aspect. Jupiter is the planet of optimism, luck, opportunity and broadening your horizons. Uranus is about space, change, freedom and independence and sometimes rebellion. With the two together in aspect, there is a drive towards breaking free of restrictions to get to where you want to be. Despite this being a tense aspect, lucky breaks are possible if you were willing to take a risk. But with Jupiter in Cancer, risks must be calculated ones in order to ensure you don't lose more than you gain. Cancer is also about all that is familiar and homely and comfortable, but familiarity can breed contempt. The struggle is about finding a way to move forwards without bringing the roof down over your head. Flashes of insight now can bring liberation and greater understanding. There's a sense that anything is possible. Jupiter and Uranus are also connected to scientific breakthroughs. In our personal lives too, we can have these breakthrough moments or we can break down. Handle this energy wisely and new horizons will open up in front of you. Mercury stations direct at the very end of the month on the 28th of February, adding to this impetus to move forwards. As ever with Mercury, it is prudent to allow the shadow period to pass before making significant changes. But with the Jupiter Uranus square in the background, the push to leap ahead may feel undeniable. The trick is to plan your way ahead brainstorm ideas and stay excited about the possibilities. So uh, this month I used the Mythic Tarot and after giving them a shuffle the card that came out was the Queen of Cups uh, which I thought was interesting because she really connects to this Pisces overtone um, and also I think the uh, North Node's entry into Libra as well. As you can see from the card, the Queen sits with her feet hidden in the lake. She's dressed in a very healing blue, her eyes are closed, yet her hand is holding the cup, so she's obviously awake and she's alert. Perhaps she's simply in deep meditation. There's an all-pervading feeling of calm with this card. The Queen of Cups is actively engaged with listening to her emotions. Um, the emotions are signified by the water. In the background, you can see there are lush fields. Um, the sea there is very, very calm and the sky is clear. The key to the Queen of Cups lies in the golden apple in her left hand. Uh, so this is a card of showing about acquiring knowledge. Um, and the way you acquire this knowledge is by listening closely to your emotional self. Your intuition tells you what your conscious mind um, can't express. So by listening carefully to yourself, you're more able to listen carefully to others. The gift of the Queen of Cups is her ability to tune in to the feelings of others. She has this ability to imagine herself walking in another's shoes and therefore her response is compassionate. So this month, be receptive, be compassionate, tune in to the feelings of the people that are around you listen to what others are saying and most of all listen to that quiet inner voice the whisper of your soul it's, it's, it's.